Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today's video, we're going to be making this and we're gonna be doing it all in Redshift. So I've done a lot of compositing videos in the past. This is my first time doing it completely in Redshift. And Redshift is a really powerful tool for compositing. And we're gonna find out why. So let's get started on this, here we go. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to do is bring in the video and you can download this from the description below. This is just the video of our road that we're going to be using uh, to do this compositing tutorial. Um, if we just select the road video mp4 in our um, object panel here, hit Control alt g let's just round this off to something a bit normal and hit OK. Now that's at, uh, uh, rounded off to 30 frames a second, we can create a composition, just drag that down to this little icon here and release. And now we have our video. Cool. So we're gonna be rendering this out as an image sequence because Cinema 4D likes image sequences. So let's do that now. Just go to composition, add to render queue. And we can set this up to be a PNG sequence. Click OK, and I have, uh, I have a folder set up here called Sequences. I'm going to put it in here into this Movie Sequence folder. And um, let's see, maybe I'll put it into this folder here, and I am going to click on Render. So that is going to save uh, Render Out as an image sequence. So I'll pause the video and we'll pop back in once that's done. Cool, so that has finished, and you can see that we have all of our images, all of our frames, so that's rendered out as an image sequence. So now we can hop into Cinema, and we can, I suppose, just start off by importing in the image sequence that we just created. So let's double click here in our materials panel, and we can call this background, because we are gonna be applying this to a background object in a second. Let's open that up and we're going to load in that sequence into the luminance channel. So let's do that now. And we have it here. Let's click on the first frame there. Say no on that. And then just click on this little thumbnail. We can go into the animation tab and we can click on calculate. That'll calculate the amount of frames in the image sequence. Just going to do a control on or control C on that to copy it. So we can paste that in here. And now we have enough frames for the video to play in full. So let's grab a background object. And the reason I'm doing this, just so I can set my camera into the right position, just to get us started. Uh, it's, it's easy to do it with a Cinema 4D background object, so that's why I'm just doing this step here. Let's apply this background material to our background object. Remember, this has our image sequence loaded, in, loaded into the luminous channel. And we can just start moving our camera around. We don't actually have a camera yet, but we'll get one in a minute. Now, let's just grab a sphere for this so we can kind of better get a better idea of what we're doing. So if I just zoom out a bit to make this sphere appear smaller, and we can just rotate our camera so that the sphere looks like it's just sitting on the road there. Something like that. Okay, cool, so I think that that sphere looks like it could possibly be sitting on the road. So I'm gonna leave it as is. And oh, I also want to, I should have done this at the start, but I'm gonna go into my right view and I'm gonna bring this uh, sphere so that it's actually sitting on the floor of our world. So right there, and now I'm just gonna bring the camera up a bit so that the sphere goes down. Hope that makes sense. Um, and just kind of refine it a bit more. Cool. Okay, so now we have our sphere in there. Don't worry, we are gonna be putting in this dancing character that I've um, showed you in the opening video of this. We're just using a sphere for now to get everything kind of, you know, sorted out before we bring in our dancing guy. Okay, so we have our sphere, now we can create a floor. So let's grab a plane and we can call this floor. This will also give us a better idea of our, you know, camera position. So we, it looks like we could do rotating the camera 
ever so slightly. Just so the floor looks more like it's sitting directly on the floor. The floor is going to help you guys to actually get a better idea of where your camera should be um, to match that perspective. Cool. Okay, so now that we have our floor, we can just scale that up a bit using those orange circles. And I'm going to reduce the width and height segments down to one and one because we don't need any, uh, we don't need loads of segments on that. Cool. So what we can do now is I suppose we can move over to Redshift, setting this up in Redshift. It's not really set up in anything at the moment. So um, I suppose we can jump into the, well, I'm going to jump into my Redshift layout. Now, you guys might not have one of these set up, but uh, if you don't, what you're going to need is you're going to need to see this Redshift render view. And to do that, you just go up here to Redshift and go down to the Redshift render view. Click on that. It'll pop up. You'll be able to grab this uh, hamburger icon and just drag it around to wherever you want and dock it somewhere, wherever you like to have it, I suppose. So let's hit play on this. And actually, before I do this, I'm going to do a control S to save because I found that um, Redshift tends to freeze a lot and stuff like that. So I'm going to be saving regularly, and I urge you guys to do the same. You'll probably have to do a project save as, because I've already set this up before recording. So now we can just hit um, render here and see what we got. Okay, so this is what we got. Now I have my uh, thing here set to original size. I'm going to set this to fit window, just so we can see the whole lot of this. And this is what we have so far. So what we can do is we can, first of all, we can light our scene. And to do that, I'm going to be using a uh, dome light. Now, what I could do is go up here to lights and my dome light is here. Now, if you guys don't have these uh, objects, these tools all docked up here, you'll find your dome light in Redshift and Redshift lights and dome light is right there. Cool, so we're getting some lighting now from the uh, dome light, but we want to kind of, uh, we want to tell it to use the the movie scene, you know, the, the, the road, this scene. We wanted to use this scene uh, to get its lighting information. So what we can do is we can go over here to the this texture path here, and if we just click on this, what we can do is we can just grab the first frame of um, this, hit control C, and just go back to the root folder and just paste it in there. You can see I've already done that. Now there might be an easier way of doing that, as in you might be able to just click on this first frame and not load in the rest of the frames. But just to be on the safe side, I like to just do it like this. So I just copy um, a single frame, usually the first frame, uh, into the root folder, and then I just use that uh, single image. Now you can see that the lighting has changed. So if I undo that, you can see that the lighting seems to have changed. So it seems to be a bit darker uh, when you bring this in. So that's fine. Um, we want to now get the same effect we were once getting using the Cinema 4D background object. We're no longer getting that. We can we can no longer see what's going on um, in our scene. Uh, so actually, I better set the render settings here to Redshift, seeing as we're using Redshift. Makes sense, I suppose. So to do that, to you know, be able to see the background properly, what we need to do is scroll down and enable backplate here. And we need to load it in as well. So I'm just going to load in. This time I'm loading in the, the actual sequence. Um, and the reason for that is because, well, I want to be able to see the video playing um, in our Redshift, Redshift render view. Say no on that. And now you can see we have our backplate in there. Hit Control S to do a save, regular saves. Keep saving, guys. Um, and now if we just have a look at this, right? So if we scrub along, you see that our video is playing over here in our Cinema 4D viewport. 
but it's not in our Redshift render view. And the reason for that is because, well, we haven't loaded in all the frames. So we have loaded in a single image. But we need to go down, we need to twiddle this down, go into the animation tab, and let's turn the mode here to be simple and detect frames. Now that's going to play back for us in the, in the Redshift render view. So I'm going to stop rendering while I'm doing stuff as well, because I find it like if I'm doing a lot of stuff in Redshift, like creating materials or editing properties, it's just, it's, it's, sometimes I, f I freeze up my, I crash Redshift. So I'm, I, I find it best to like, you know, not be rendering while I'm doing stuff. Control S again. Control S didn't work. So the fear is on me already. Why didn't Control S work? It's already broken. Anyway, moving on. So we need to make this floor invisible. We don't want to see the floor. We want the floor to be transparent. Um, and I might just move my camera around a bit more. We're going to have to render this now so we can see what we're doing. Just refining my camera. I'm probably going to be doing that a couple of times because uh, I'm never happy with the camera position. Anyway, so we can see that uh, the floor is here. We want it to be transparent. We don't want to see it, but at the same time, we don't want to lose our shadows. So to do that, we click on our floor object, right click, go to Redshift Tags, and we grab a Redshift Object Tag. Then we go to the Matte tab, turn on Override here, turn on Enabled here, and now our floor is transparent, so we can't see it anymore, which is great. But we can't see our shadows. We can get our shadows back by clicking on Enabled here. Now we have our shadows in our scene, so that's looking pretty good. So if I just hide off the floor, you can see that the only thing that's changing is the shadows. So that's great. So floor is transparent, shadows are still there. Awesome. Now you'll notice this car is, uh, you can see that the floor is reflecting. i just pull this back. You can see that the floor is quite reflective. If I turn off my sphere here, you can see that it's really reflective. See how much it's reflecting this big white building and it's reflecting this car. So we have to replicate that in our floor. So to do that, what we can do is, well, let's first of all just stop rendering, do a control S, and let's go and see control S isn't working. That's going to be a pain. Um, let's create a redshift material. Let's go to redshift materials and let's grab a material. We can call this sphere. It's going to be for our sphere. And we're later going to apply it to our dancing guy as well. So let's apply that to our sphere, and I'm going to make this as white as it can be. Or close. Yeah, I'm just going to go really white on that. And now let's start rendering this out. Um, so you can see that there is no reflection in our floor. Our, our sphere is not being reflected by our floor. So to fix that, we can go to our floor object, go to the Redshift object tag, and let's increase the reflection scale here in the Mat tab. We can bring that right up. Now, we're still not seeing any reflection because we have not yet created a material for our floor. So let's do that now. Redshift materials. Let's grab a new material, and let's call this floor. Now we can apply this to our floor object and we're going to start getting some reflections. We're going to have to scale up our floor as well. So we can just use these yellow circles here to scale this up. And like that. So now you can see we're getting some nice reflections in our floor. Well, I wouldn't call them nice because they don't really look like the reflections that we're getting over here. So how do we make them look like these reflections? You know, they're kind of like all you know, bumpy and the bump is kind of being, well, it is being caused by the, um, by the cracks in the tiles here. 
So what we can do to replicate that is we can open up our floor object or our floor material and we can grab what is known as a camera map node. Let's just drag this over. And this is basically just going to map any image that we load into the path here into, um, into the scene. So let's just grab the image that we've already copied out, this frame here, the first frame of our sequence. And now that we have that done, we can grab a bump, RS bump node, bump map node, and we can plug in our camera node into the RS bump map node's uh, input, and then we can plug plug the bump map nodes uh, the bump map into the uh, bump input of the material node, and now you can see we're getting some bump, and you can actually see that if I just change this to original size and go to 100%, you can actually see that we're getting bumps along the places where the tiles actually are. So how cool is that? I mean, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would definitely rate that as, you know, a 9 of coolness. That's pretty damn cool. Um, and that is very easy to set up. So that's a really cool way of uh, making, you know, really selling this. Um, so that's looking cool. So let's scrub forward a bit. So our car is going to be more visible. So we'll be able to see the reflection here of the car. And we can then match this reflection up as close as possible with the real world reflection in our, in our video. So again, I'm going to stop rendering and I'm going to go and do annoyingly file save project because control S isn't working for me. And um, I am going to, yeah, I'm going to have to turn on render for this because we are going to be messing with the floor. Let's go into the floors material node. And what we can do first of all is we can grab the color picker and just kind of pick a color from our floor. Like you can see the colors changing here as I'm moving this around. So I'm going to go for like a purple from the floor. And um, I'm going to also go down to reflection and I'm going to increase the roughness on this as well to something like 0.187. And you can see now that we're getting a lot closer to where the, you know, where this needs to be for the, um, for these reflections to look the same as the reflections, the real world reflections. Um, and also I'm going to go to my bump map node and I'm going to increase the height scale, maybe up to like five. So if I just undo that, and redo that, you can see why I'm increasing the height scale because these bumps, these tiles are very uh, displaced. So it makes sense to increase the height scale. So we're getting a much more uh, realistic um, representation um, of what this reflection should be looking like, I suppose. Uh, again, I just want to shout out to this camera map node and how cool it is. If I disconnect that, and then reconnect it. You can just see how how cool that is. I'm uh, I'm I'm a real fanboy of the camera map node. <laughs> okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to do another file save. Saving like a loon ball. Saving like a lunatic on this. Um, just in case this stuff crashes and I have to do it all again. We don't want that. Okay, so the sphere is jagged around the edges. Now, this doesn't really matter because we are going to be bringing in a dancing guy. But if you wanted to just use a sphere, you can make this nice and smooth. 
just by right clicking on the sphere object going to redshift tags redshift object tag and going into the geometry tab clicking on override clicking uh, enabling tessellation here now you can see we have a nice smooth sphere I want to jump into my right view and you might want to click on this lock icon so that it won't start rendering from the right view click on the lock icon this lock icon it'll lock the camera to perspective so then you'll be able to freely jump between your uh, viewports without uh, you know without it trying to render from the right view or anything like that okay oh i think it's i think it's actually frozen on me yeah it's 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 definitely frozen so you can see like perspective views completely disappeared hang on i'll stop rendering and see if that fixes it no it's frozen okay i'm gonna yeah there we go there's my bug report look okay guys i'm gonna pause the video fix this and jump back in in a minute okay guys so yeah i had to restart my machine there and there we go the benefits of saving regularly uh luckily uh i was pretty much right where i left off uh, i didn't have to do much to get this back to where we were um anyway moving on let's hope for, let's fingers crossed that doesn't happen again now what i was just about to do was move my sphere down closer to my floor ever so slightly closer and let's bring this yeah so what were we doing i kind of lost my train of thought so yeah we we're just matching up the reflection here with um as close we can with the reflection in the real life video and i think we're pretty much there guys to be honest so i think what we can do now is we can bring in our guy or will we no do you know what we'll do we'll do a test render on this so if i just set this back to fit window and i'm actually going to bring my sphere a bit closer to the camera as well oh we don't even have a camera yet so let's create one um go to redshift cameras and let's put in a standard camera there make it active and now if we hop back into our top view we actually have a camera that we can work with so we'll be able to move our sphere closer to it and we can actually see what we're doing so i'm going to bring my sphere nice and close to about there and i am going to set this up for render so what we are going to do is we're going to go into our dome light and we're going to turn off the back plate or no we're turning off the background because we don't want to see that um leaving the back plate on back the background is turned off and we want to set this up so i'm just going to stop rendering now because we don't need to keep rendering while we're doing this let's see if control s is working for me now still not working that is just hurting my feelings it could be because i'm recording screen maybe i don't know possibly that um so let's go into our render settings and we have the renderer set to redshift here we're going to save this as 1920 by 1080 and we're going to render out the current frame because we're just doing a test render i'm going to get after effects ready as well because i had that closed down when i restarted my machine obviously so i'll load that up and we're not going to be saving multi-pass we're going to be just saving a regular image as a png and let's pick the file path here so i'm going to save this into a folder that i have already set up called rendered sequence and uh yeah going to save it here call it test frame 
and we are going to turn on the alpha channel and we're also going to turn on straight alpha but before we turn on straight alpha i'm going to show you what happens if we don't turn on straight alpha we definitely need to turn on alpha channel for obvious reasons because we don't we want transparency in this we don't we want we don't want to see uh, we, we don't want to see black, so we want this to be transparent so we can overlay it into our real video. Um, so I think that's ready to go. The redshift settings at the moment, if we go into advanced, automatic sampling is turned on, so that's fine. So let's just render the picture viewer on that. So that's going to render out. And it's going to look really, really nice. And everything's going to look sweet as it should. And this was bugging me for ages because, um, as some of you might know, might know, I'm very new to Redshift. Um, I'm still kind of just messing around with it from time to time and trying to figure it out. And uh, there isn't that many compositing videos available on YouTube. Like, there's a couple. Uh, but it just didn't tell me how to do this part. Um, maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. And if anybody knows of the right way, now the wrong way is I'm using straight alpha. I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way. But anyway, I'm rambling here. So if I go into layer here and if I go to single pass, you can see that our alpha, oh, okay, we actually forgot to do something here because we shouldn't be seeing this white here. We don't want to see that. All we want to see is the... Um, the sphere, or do we, actually? Let's just bring it into After Effects and see what it looks like. I think we do want to see that. So I'll just stop rambling here, because I'm beginning to sound like a right noob. So let's jump into After Effects and open up the, uh, the composition that we were working with at the start. And I'm going to bring in that frame that we just rendered out, this test frame. And I'm going to also bring in the movie sequence. Where is it? It is here. Bring this in as a PNG sequence. And let's just create a composition from this. And then we can drag our test frame over it. Okay, yeah. So we did do something that we shouldn't have. So let's fix that now. We don't, obviously, this shouldn't be black. So if we go back in, let's click on render. Uh, this and if we switch this from RGB to alpha you can see that that is not what we want so we need to go to the floor is it the yes I think it's the floor the redshift render tag on the floor object go to mat and yeah we need to turn on effects alpha here so now you can see that that is actually what we're supposed to be getting. So if I just stop this from rendering and then render to picture viewer again on this, say yes. Now, as that renders out, now if I go to layer, single pass, you can see that we're no longer seeing the floor at all. Like we're just seeing the sphere and the shadow. So that is sorted out now. So back into history, and that is good to go. It is very slow to render, as you can see. It's uh, the last frame we had, what, what was it, like 29 seconds? So this one is, wow, it's like taking ages just to render this bucket here. Um, come on. It's actually taking a lot longer. It's amazing that that really just um, turning on the, what was it called? Effects alpha here in the shadow uh, on the redshift object tag really increased render time for us. Uh, and that's news to me. Again, all of this stuff is news to me. But anyway, if we jump back into After Effects now and reload this frame, no, still not working. Let's delete that. And let's just see 
if we just bring it in. Haha, okay. So it just wasn't, it mustn't have finished rendering or reload frame wasn't working for some reason. But anyway, now we have just our sphere coming in with our shadows. It's all looking very nice, but something's missing. Something that is really nice and we don't want to be missing. Have you guessed what it is? It is the reflection. So no longer are we seeing our, our floor is not no longer reflecting the sphere. Um, and we spent so much time bigging up the camera map node and how cool it was. If I just switch this back to RGB, play that. Like the reflection is missing, basically. And I spent a good chunk of time try trying to figure out how it went missing. And I figured out that if you go into the render settings, go to out, go to the save and click on, turn on straight alpha and then render this out again. We're going to overwrite that. That solves the problem. Now, when you're looking at this and it's rendering out, you're like, hmm, there isn't actually a problem because the reflection is visible. So why is it that when we put into After Effects, our reflection disappears? If anybody knows the answer to that, guys, please let me know in the comments below. Because, again, uh, I, I'm trying to figure all this stuff out when it comes to Redshift. And uh, it is, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a tough um, render engine to learn, definitely. Having been in cinema for so long, uh, it's definitely, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's a tricky one, all right. But um, yeah, so straight alpha seemed to have fixed it for me. And I wonder, does it render out faster with straight alpha turned on? I don't know. Um, but what I'll do, guys, is I'll pause the video again so you guys don't have to listen to me rambling on for another uh, minute while this renders out. Okay, so that's finished rendering. Um, Ignore this weirdness going on that won't show up in After Effects, thankfully. Um, so if we jump back into After Effects, oh, okay. So it seems to have reloaded itself. But uh, yeah, if it hasn't for you guys, just reload footage. And yeah, now our reflection's in the scene. If I zoom in. And if I just turn this off and on you can see that the reflection is there. The, the sphere is now being reflected by the floor. We could turn up the reflection strength of the floor, possibly. I think we do need to do that because the reflection here is like very noticeable. The reflection from the car, like it's really, really bright. Um, I'd say it's probably because our sphere isn't as white. Is it? Is it as white as white can be? I think it is actually, yeah. Um, let's see how we can increase the reflection there. So it's already set up to the highest on the uh, reflection scale there on the object tag, redshift object tag. Let's increase the reflection strength on the floor possibly. I think it's already... Can that go higher? No, it can't. So maybe if we uh, bring down the roughness, possibly. That might help us out a bit. And if we reduce the height scale on the bump, maybe down to like three. But I like it at five, though. I do like it at five. I'm going to turn back on the the background here. Yeah, it looks it looks good there actually. I wonder did those changes make any difference that we just made? So I'll set this back to five. That didn't make any difference to the noticeability of the reflection. And. The roughness possibly made a difference. So let's bring the roughness back up. Mm. 
Yeah, okay. I think uh, I'm going to leave that as is because I'm not really sure how you go about increasing the brightness of that reflection. I mean, you could do it in post where you could basically grab a Lumetri. If I just type in Lumetri here into the effects panel and just add this to the uh, test frame. Go to basic cre cre uh, correction and I could bring up the exposure here. And then you can see that we're actually able to brighten up the reflection a bit. But we're also brightening up the, the sphere as well, which we don't want to do. Possibly we could increase the brightness of the dome light. That could do it for us. So if we go to our dome light, and if we increase the exposure, maybe. Aha. So that seems to have done it for us. But we don't want to go up too far with this. What was it? Is it? it was set to zero. Okay, so we'll go up a little bit. That's too much. Just trying to brighten up the reflection here so that it's closer to the reflection from the car. I think that's looking a lot closer. Okay, so I'm going to try that. Let's uh, stop this render here and turn off the background again. Yeah, turn off the background. And let's do a render to picture viewer on that again. And I'm going to pause the video again so you guys don't have to watch this render out. Even though if you are following along, you're watching it render out on your own machines anyway. So I could just keep talking, but I don't want to be rambling. So I'm going to pause the video, pop back in when this is done. Okay, so that's rendered out. And we've definitely brightened up that reflection for sure. Okay. Okay, guys. So we're on to the very last part of this. We're going to be bringing in our dancing guy. So we can delete off the sphere. Let's stop this from rendering and let's go and save this project. So now we're going to go file, open, and we're bringing in our old table dancer guy. So I don't know if any of you have watched this tutorial, but uh, a good long time ago, I did, well, maybe half a year ago, I made this tutorial um, where it's basically a guy and he's just dancing on the table. Um, if any of you haven't actually watched that tutorial, it's not a Redshift tutorial, it's a Cinema 4D compositing tutorial. If any of you, any of you are interested in watching that, I'm putting a link in the top of the screen there for you guys. You can watch it if you like. So let's grab this guy. Uh, I don't know why I call this N guy. Uh, I think it's supposed to be called uh, Guy Null but I must have mistyped that. I'm going to grab all of this. That's um, his geometry and all that stuff. And I'm going to grab this random, um, random effector. And let's do a control C and then we can just go into our Redshift compositing project and control V him in there. Now, Let's just rewind that and play. Let's jump it into my perspective here so we can see what this looks like. So I want to make him bigger. And to do that, I'm just going to use my camera and I'm just going to zoom right in on him there. I'm going to reduce the scale of my floor to give me a better idea of my perspective. Okay, so let's just play this from beginning to end, just to make sure that our guy stays relatively close to the center of the screen and doesn't go out of the shot. We want to make sure that he doesn't go too far close to the edge of this floor either. So 
So I'm just going to move this floor over a good bit more and scale it as well. Okay, because, uh, you know, we don't want him going over the edge of the floor and then there's going to be no shadows and there's going to be no reflection after all that. I might just rotate this as well a bit so it looks like it's better placed on the floor. And I think that that's good to go. Like, what I mean is he's not going to go out of the shot. He seems like he's just going to dance around there. He's going to stay pretty close to the center and he's not going to go out of the shot. So I think that's good. We should be fine with that. And I don't think I'm going to render out all of these frames either because it's like it, it, it'd take quite a bit of time. I'm probably going to render out about 560 frames. So... 565 will be plenty. Okay. Cool. So we have our guy in there now. So we can delete off this old Cinema 4D material and we can replace it with our sphere material. Um, which we have here. And I suppose we can just see what this is looking like. I'm going to do a file save first. And now we can see what this is looking like. Okay, so it's looking eh, not, not too bad. I mean, we could open up this sphere material and see if we can mess around with the uh, properties of this a bit. We might... Maybe we'll add a bit of color, actually. Like if we grab another one of these spheres, duplicate it, bring it under the cloner. Now, again, I know you guys don't really have this set up, but just uh, watch the uh, tutorial on the table dancer guy and you will be able to set this up and know exactly what I'm talking about here. So if we drag that up, and then we have two spheres. We drag it up again. I'm going to stop this from rendering as well because I don't want to chance freezing uh, my machine again. Then we have three spheres. So this cloner is going to clone these spheres and they could all, they're all going to be different sizes because we have this random effector making it so. And now we can just give them different colors. So if I just duplicate this and call it sphere one, Duplicate it again, and we can call this sphere two. And we can change the color now to something like, I don't know, like a yellowy kind of a color. And we can apply that to sphere one. And this one can be maybe a greenish kind of a color. Maybe not green. Maybe like a, an a orange or something. Uh, did that not change? No, it didn't. I don't know how it didn't. I mustn't have pressed OK. OK. And then we can apply that to sphere 2. So now if we rewind that and just kind of kick that in. Now you can see we've got different color spheres. And we'll see what this looks like now as well. Yeah, so I don't know. Is it looking better? Is it looking worse? I don't really know, to be honest. I think it looks a bit worse because the orange doesn't look great. So I might change that orange to a bit of a lighter orange. Something like that. And the white then also kind of doesn't go really with the... So I'm going to make that a bit more yellow. Yeah, okay, I'm going to leave it like that. I mean, you could even just pick one of the custom presets. So this could be like gold. 
you know, you could say that's kind of cool. He looks kind of Christmassy. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it as is. You guys are welcome to mess around with that even further. Uh, make this a bit less orange. Not that. Mm, well, I could just go for a blue or something. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. And also, we need to make sure that the spheres are not going to be intersecting the floor because this is set up with dynamics and currently the spheres are traveling through the floor. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we need to grab a glider body tag on our floor. So right click, go to render tags or rigging. Where, where is it? Simulation tags and grab a collider body tag. And now we're not going to get any intersections at all and our spheres are going to be sat up on top of the floor and it's just going to look a lot better okay so render times now we're going to start looking into kind of you know um optimizing the this for render and making sure that we're not looking dealing with like a huge render time it's going to be huge enough save this it's going to be big enough um because we're going to be turning on motion blur and all that good stuff as well so it is going to take, you know, it's going to take a bit of time to render out, but we can improve on it. So if we render it out as is now, look, so let's stop this. If we render it out as is, so automatic sampling is turned on in the Redshift render settings. We also want motion blur to be turned on as well. And if we render this out with the render settings as is, let's just do that now so we can see what kind of render times we're looking at. Let's turn off the background. And make sure you're not like rendering in the render view when you click uh, render to picture viewer. So we can just render out this test frame here and we'll see how long this actually takes to render. Again, I'm going to pause the video here, guys, um, so that you don't have to, you know, wait here and watch this render. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that is rendering out at 2 minutes and 26 seconds, which is like, you know, really, really not good. It's, uh, it's uh, lengthy render times. Um, graphics card wise, I am, what am I rocking on my, hang on, I'll tell you now in 2 seconds. With my graphics card, I am rocking a GeForce GTX 1066 gigabytes. So that's my graphics card. So obviously that's going to have an effect on render times. So if you guys have a weak graphics card, I, I'd say my one's kind of mediocre. Um, but if you guys have a weak graphics card, that's going to take a lot longer to render. And if you have a really good graphics card, I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that's going to do. Um, but yeah, so that's that's coming in. It looks pretty cool. Like, you know, the motion blur is sweet. If you were rendering this out with Cinema 4D with motion blur turned on, you're going to look at a lot higher render times, I, I'd imagine. Um, but if we go into After Effects now, and let's just bring that in, that frame that we just rendered. And there we have our guy, and he's in there. And we're getting some nice reflections there uh, on the floor. And we're getting the nice shadows. And we can apply some effects to this guy as well with uh, some correction, color correction with the Lumetri effect in After Effects. We can increase exposure. Can bring it right up. But yeah, just even being able to just bring that up a tad we can bring up the contrast. Uh, we can change the temperature of this. You know, so we're going to be able to do a lot of cool stuff with this in post. Um, to make it look a bit more brighter, I suppose. Um, and or you could kind of increase the like, I'm not going to go and do this now because I don't want to be messing around too much. 
you can increase the exposure on this you know our exposure is quite low on the dome light so if we brought that up you don't want to go too high either so I'm gonna leave mine as is I mean is this still gold why is that still gold did I not tell that to not be gold okay it isn't gold it did look kind of cool gold though I might just go back to maybe silver see what that looks like that does look kind of cool maybe I'll leave it like that um, yeah I'll leave it as silver why not go crazy um, so let's try and bring down these render times uh, as best we can um, so let's go to original size and we can bring this to 100% so we can zoom right in and let's just render out like a small region of this so to do that I'm holding down shift I clicked on this uh, what's it called I have to hover over it now to know what it's called okay it's called a region button and if you click on it hold down shift you'll just be able to select a region that you want to render so you don't have to render out the whole thing just to save yourself some time be able to get an idea of where your noise is happening um, and we need to turn on bucket mode as well so that we're going to be able to see what the actual final render is going to look like as opposed to progressive rendering okay so like it's a pretty sweet render at the moment there's no noise there's no you know grain and it's looking pretty good the only problem is the render times are super high it's taking a long time so let's try and fix that now so let's go into our render settings and what we can do is we can I suppose we can go into sampling and we can turn off automatic sampling now this is going to render out really quickly but it's going to be super noisy as you can see so we're getting a lot of noise uh, from our light like there's not enough samples um, from our dome light so if I click on my dome light and go to samples where are you samples in the details tab and if we just multiply this by four you we should be getting a little bit more noise and to get a better idea of this what we can do is we can go into the AOV tab in render settings show AOV manager and then if we find I think it's is it yeah so it's going to be shadows drag shadows in and now if we go to our render view and change this to shadows now you're going to be able to see like where's the noise coming from uh, in our shadows so if we brought this these samples down to like one and now you can see that we're getting loads of noise in our you know in our shadows because you know the dome light doesn't have enough samples so we'll bring that back up to what we had it at I can't remember what we had it at I know we multiplied this by four so we had it at two five six so that gets rid of a lot of the noise for us but does it get rid of it enough mm, i wouldn't say it does but that's probably because of global illumination doesn't have enough samples right so if we go to the global illumination tab and we can increase the brute force rays here multiply that by four That's looking a lot cleaner there now. We could even multiply it again, maybe by two this time. And it's looking cleaner again. Now I can't really see uh, reflections. What we can do is go into the AOV tab, go to the AOV manager 
and let's grab the reflections AOV drag that in then we'll be able to access it here in our drop down and it's going to show us like are we getting any noise in our reflections and I don't think it we are to be honest like it doesn't look like we are like if we go to sampling and if we override uh, reflections and if we just bring the samples down to like one and see how noisy it gets okay so let's undo that and then just maybe multiply this by eight see does that do anything for us yeah okay so you can see some of those like little white whatever you call them like little white dots i think they're called fireflies or something have disappeared so if i like undo that control z back down to eight now you might not be able to see any of this because of the compression when i upload this to youtube you know it's going to be some compression but there definitely is a difference so i'm gonna redo that so we're gonna have 64 samples for our reflections and let's see what else are we talking about so let's just go back to our beauty and see what this is looking like now noise wise so it's uh, still like a bit noisy kind of maybe we could bring up the samples in the dome light even further if we multiply this by maybe two see if that makes a difference for us I don't think it did so I'm going to undo that and we'll jump into the global illumination tab here and maybe multiply the brute force rays by two And I don't think that's doing anything for us either, to be honest. Oh, maybe it did. Let's just check, actually. Do we have... So let's put in a global illumination AOV into our AOV manager. GI. Where are you, GI? Um, yeah, well, it's in alphabetical order. So <laughs> uh, global illumination. Let's drag that in and let's have a look at this okay so you can see we are getting some noise in our gi so if we go back into the global illumination tab and just multiply this by four let's see if we can get rid of that noise yes we can so i don't know if you guys noticed that but we had a lot of noise there and I'm just going to undo. And hopefully you'll be able to see that noise come back in. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty obvious. Even with YouTube compression, that must be quite obvious. I'll redo that. So we're going back. We're going from 128 brute force rays. We're going to 512. And that really just cleans up all that noise we were getting earlier go back to our beauty pass now and uh, yeah I think that's I think that's looking pretty good let's bring this down here have a look what it's looking like we're on our floor as well floors look looking pretty clean as well so let's stop this and now we're going to do another test render on this to see what this is looking like we can overwrite that uh, test frame that we just did now remember we had two minutes 26 seconds so i really really hope that that render time has improved um fingers crossed on that otherwise all those uh, messing around render settings was kind of a waste of time so uh 
it should it, no it should be it should be improved so i'm gonna again i'm gonna pause the video here and uh we'll pop back in once this is done okay so that was super quick so we just like nailed the uh render time there like we got it way way down so that's cool uh it is a bit noisy you could argue that it's a little bit noisy but let's just bring this into after effects and see what it's looking like okay so it reloaded by itself and i'm going to zoom in on this to 100 and i'm going to see if i can live with this because remember like this actual footage you know like the actual footage is going to be noisy as well because you know video footage is usually noisy so i can deal with a bit of noise and I think like once we apply, once we bring up the exposure on this, you know what, I could definitely live with that guys, for sure. I think I'm gonna do a full render on this, render this out as is. Um, so, yeah, I think that's looking pretty damn cool to be honest. Okay, so yeah, let's just go and do a full render of this uh we got super fast render time with that so that's great so this will render out in no time and um, let's do a file save and yeah if we learned anything today it's that saving is super important that's for sure let's go into our render settings go to save and we're going to render this out to a folder called full sequence and this is going to be full sequence sequence full sequence sequence and alpha channel start on straight alpha channel is turned on and that is good to go well it's not good to go we're going to be rendering out all frames and remember i already set it from 0 to 565 so it's most of the frames of the actual video footage anyway and I think that that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So I'm going to save this again. And I'm going to go to my render queue. And let's add this to it. And let's start rendering. Making sure that the camera is set up correctly. Cool. Cool okay so that's rendering away next i'm gonna be bringing in the fully rendered sequence into after effects and just messing around with some of the color uh correction effects inside of after effects and uh and that's gonna be it guys and then we're gonna be done so um yeah join me back here in a second and for you guys obviously who are following along and are going to be rendering this out you're looking at maybe uh i don't know maybe a couple of hours or something like that so for you guys i'll see you in a couple of hours and uh, for everybody else who just wants to see what i'm going to be doing in after effects i will see you in a second okay guys so that finished out rendering finished rendering out uh yeah my couple of hours estimation was completely off but we rendered out 566 frames it took me five hours um, my graphics card is uh, NVIDIA, uh, I think it's NVIDIA 1060, 6 gigabytes. So yeah, I mean, not bad. We had motion blur and all on. So, you know, imagine rendering that out in Cinema 4D. We'd be looking at much greater render times. Anyway, let's now set this up in After Effects, just finish this off. So let's jump into After Effects and I'm going to import in that render. Full sequence, I have it here. Just clicking on the first frame bringing that in and we're also going to bring in the sequence like the uh, image sequence for the uh, road video as well which is in a folder called movie sequence for me anyway and i'm bringing that in as well it's gonna create a new composition by dragging it down to that little composition icon and i'm going to do the same well i'm not going to do the same i'm bringing this full sequence down to the same composition so now we can just skip ahead a couple of frames to get rid of that uh, kind of part where the, um, the cloners kind of jump into position, the clone spheres. So about there, two frames 
uh, forward. Hit B on my keyboard, and I'm just going to hit control. Well, before I do that, I'm going to go right to the end. And then I'm going to set the uh, end of the work area with N on my keyboard. Then I can trim the comp to the work area with control shift and X. Cool. So now we can watch this. Uh, I actually have my frame uh, set to skip five frames in my preview there. So I'm going to make sure that's set to zero. And now we can watch this back. So we're going to like, you know, tidy this up with regards to the color correction. We're going to, we're going to make this, we're going to correct the exposure so that it doesn't look as dark. And we're going to mess around with some of the other properties as well in the Lumetri effect. So let, let's go into our effects and presets and let's search for uh, Lumetri color. And then making sure that the sequence is selected, we can just double click and that'll automatically add that effect to this layer. So let's open up basic correction and we can, first of all, we can, well, we can mess around with temperature. We can make that a bit warmer, colder if you like, but definitely we want to make it a bit warmer. I'm going to bring it up to about maybe 16 tint. If you go left, it's going to turn green. If you go right, it's going to turn purple. So I'm not going to do anything with tint. Exposure, contrast, I'm definitely going to bring up the contrast. Uh, up to a value of about 40. And exposure, I'm going to bring that up as well. But very A very small amount for exposure, maybe 0.4. So let's just turn off this Lumetri color on and off to see the difference that that's making straight away. Already that's looking way better. Uh, we could leave it at that. I mean, I am happy with that now. I think that's looking really good. Contrast could be brought down a little bit. Maybe I'll go 20 on the contrast. Um, and we, we have a bunch of other stuff in here we could mess with, like uh, highlights. Like we could say bring up the highlights a bit or maybe to like 20 shadows we could make those a bit darker possibly minus 10 maybe on the shadows oh yeah minus 20 maybe on the shadows And whites and blacks, I mean, I mean, I, I think I'll just leave those. It's up to you guys. You can actually, uh, if you bring down the blacks there, you can see that the shadow is actually getting darker. So that might be something you, you, you'd like to do for your own um, video. Because if you look at this truck here, the, the shadows are quite dark. But I mean, it is a big truck, so it's going to have darker shadows. I'm leaving my blacks as is. And... For creative, if we just go and zoom in uh, on our guy, I mean, the grain is really nicely matching up with the with the background video, with the actual video footage, um, and the motion blur looks really nice. We could, you know, sharpen this up, but we don't want to do that because you know it doesn't look um, it doesn't look like it belongs if we sharpen it. We could actually reduce the sharpness as well um, to see if that would look a bit better but again do you know I don't want to mess around with this too much it's all it's already looking pretty cool um, and that is it guys that is it so again uh, thanks for sticking around till the very end for all you guys who managed to make it to the very end I know we had a couple of hiccups along the way but uh, I do appreciate you guys that do stick around till the very end. And um, I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.